Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Live Wire Markets. My name is Vishal Texnani, and today we're talking about whether we, whether we as investors have gotten it wrong all this time. If we think about where the returns have come from over the last five to ten years, it hasn't been from the banks, it hasn't been from BHP or Telstra. It's been from growth stocks, the CSLs, the Altiums, the Zeros of the world. So is it time that we asked ourselves, is it time to load up on growth stocks? Joining me to discuss is Roger Montgomery from Montgomery Investment Management and Ben Clark from TMS Capital. Ben, let's start with you. The yep. data says it all. Yep. Technology stocks globally are up 20% since February. Industrial names are down over 20% over the same period. Is it time for investors to rewire their thinking and go for growth? Um, well, from my point of view, ultimately, you always want to invest in a business which you think can grow. So um, I don't think there needs to be a change of thinking. Um, I think it more comes down to looking at the areas of the market where you think you can get growth and pay a reasonable sort of multiple. And that's the debate that's been going on for most of the last decade, really, in the Australian market. But growth has clearly been a winner. Um, it's winning because um, you know, the, the forces that are changing technology in particular and also in healthcare are accelerating. Um, so I think it's an area of your portfolio you definitely want to have exposure to. Okay, so what Ben is basically saying is GARP, growth at a reasonable price. Are you hmm. subscribing to that, Roger? Well, we're value investors, so yes. <laughs> um, having said that though, uh, you know, if I could just layer on what Ben has said, um, equities form the growth part of anyone's portfolio. So it makes sense to invest in companies that are growing. Uh, you want to own a business that's going to be materially larger in five, 10 or 20 years time. Um, but it comes down, at the moment, it comes down to simple arithmetic. Uh, and by that I mean to say that if interest rates drop by a, a given percentage, the present value of a dollar earned in 20 years time, it, it jumps proportionally more in percentage terms than a dollar earned in five years time. So that's why all the companies that are earning no money today but have hopes of earning money in the future have done so well in recent years, particularly since the GFC. And it's because interest rates have been on a, you know, on a steep decline and a consistent decline. And you know, we've heard from the RBA, there's no plans of raising rates anytime soon. And so people can feel fairly comfortable buying growth at the moment. Okay, so simple arithmetic, arithmetic is, should we be jumping on board if uh, this is what's gonna drive growth stocks? Should we be jumping on, onto it? Well, the time to jump on board was when, you know, Afterpay was down 78%. You know, that was the time to buy it, not when it subsequently bounced 560%. Um, you know, the time to be buying it is obviously when the baby's being thrown out with the bathwater. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more circumspect now because I think a lot of the good news is factored into these companies. Okay, Ben, what do you reckon? Good news factored in or are interest rates going to take off to pay up to $100? Yeah, I, I, I think there's definitely some logic in what Roger's saying, but I also think, you know, you could say Facebook was a platform that didn't exist 15 years ago and it had zero users and it's now got one bank. 1.8 billion users every day logging on and that hasn't grown because interest rates have fallen. So I think maybe the valuation has grown somewhat as a result of it, but there is still growth occurring for other reasons. And, you know, I've gone back and looked at that kind of 2000s period in America. There was a very similar debate happening back then as well. People were sort of saying you're mad to buy Salesforce, to buy Amazon, to buy some of these companies because they had no earnings, the, the valuations just looked insane. But if you fast forward to where we are now, they're actually not that expensive. And so to me, you know, I, I agree there's some, um, probably some excessiveness at the moment, but I think the market can see the earnings coming. And, um, and you know, that is a theme for me, is trying to work out which businesses that's gonna play out correctly for, because there'll be some that we're expecting that where it doesn't actually occur. Yeah, and, that, and that's the key. Um, sure. It's the, it's the beta of these stocks. So, you know, there's, there's, as Ben said, there's been a lot of growth uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the revenue streams of these and the customers of these businesses, but there's also been massive PE expansion. Uh, and so if you get any disruption to that growth or any disappointment around that growth, they are high beta stocks. So, you know, you've got to be prepared to look, as Ben said, you've got to be prepared to look beyond the current volatility, accept that that could happen uh, and believe in the growth long term. Okay, let's talk about uh, how you find out uh, your comfort levels around that growth. What is it that you look for before investing in a growth business, Roger? Look, there's a few things and it depends if we're talking about the Montgomery Fund and the private fund or whether we're talking about the small companies fund. But generally what we want is we want a, a really solid thematic. You know, we want to make sure that there's, there's, 
there's growth in that particular sector. Um, you know, cloud computing, for example, is one of those that we know a lot about. Um, and then we, within that, we want a business that is going to grow and has a strategy for that growth and most importantly has resources to execute on that strategy. I'd just add that sometimes they, we know they're gonna raise money uh, and provided we believe in the management team, we think they're really good at what they're doing and they've done this before, then we'll back them if they have to raise capital and they haven't got the resources today. Okay, Ben, what is it that you're looking for in growth companies? Yeah, I think what the point Roger just made at the end there, um, to, to grow a business from something that's very small to hopefully something that's a global dominating business, it just it, it requires c complete relentless um, management ability um, to get through so many different hurdles. And anyone that started a business from scratch would know uh, what that's like. So for me, it's that the management team are key. Um, how we generally start out is sort of listening to what the, the CEO ideally is sort of saying about where he thinks the business could be in three, five years. And then just, just as often as we can, listening to him and just wanting to hear that same narrative, ticking off the milestones that he's giving you. And what we tend to do is sort of build a position as we gain confidence that the company is executing on what it said to the market that it could deliver. Um, so maybe a smaller investment at the start, you know, not too much capital risk at initially and actually buying on the way up. I, I actually think the hardest thing with these businesses is not selling. You know, it's, um, you know when a stock goes up 40%, 80%, 140% and you're watching it closely, it's incredibly hard to, to not pull the trigger and sell. And that's been, I think, one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. And that's that's a really good point. And I'd like to throw in a case study here. Let's look at Afterpay. It is yep. one of your holdings. Yep. Uh, tell us about how you, um, uh, you know, what you found about the company that made you so attracted to it. And why isn't it that you're, you're, you're jumping off board? It's It's been a five, six bagger already since March. Yeah, so I, I think that's probably one I could say um, is a good ex exhibit of what I was talking about before. We, we got into Afterpay when it was about $6. Um, it was really more on what we heard from merchants in terms of how thrilled they were with the platform and the results that it was giving them. It was also looking at things like Google Analytics and stuff like that, which I think can be quite a good tool to try and work out what's going on, speaking to customers. And you know, then let's start to listen to the management and, and listen to what they thought. And it was building that position. I would say in recent times we've been, and the way we sort of manage, we've been trimming down the position. It's become a larger weighting. And as we think, you know, the market's now factoring in a much um, more high probability of success. And, um, you know, that's how we sort of played it out. And that's typically how we will invest into a growth stock. Okay. Roger, I'd love to know about the lens that you look through uh, with a company like Afterpay. Are you holding it currently? No, we don't own Afterpay. Why aren't you jumping on the bandwagon? Well, you know, being dyed in the wool value investors, we thought at six bucks it was expensive. You know, I will admit to that. You know, it's been phenomenal. It sits now at about $16 billion market cap, um, you know, about 500 million of revenue. Probably going to make a loss this year of about 24 million bucks. Um, you know, there is a lot of growth there, but there's also a lot priced in. We think that the, um, you know, the cloud computing, the data centre space uh, is where there's a lot of growth and we don't have to pay as much for it. So Macquarie Telecom, for example, is a business where uh, we think they're executing incredibly well. Um, we think the thematic is really good, obviously, uh, and we believe that that company has a lot of um, unrealised value potential uh, in its car park, believe it or not. We like to call it the $2 billion car park. Uh, and uh, we've been to see the company twice in the last couple of weeks, uh, and we can see that they're actually doing a, a better job than what they expected they'd be able to do in terms of signing up customers. Okay, let's take a step back and talk about your portfolio construction. How much cash are you holding right now? And what's the breakdown of your portfolio? Have you made any significant changes since, um, since Well, it March? depends on the fund. Yeah, so we did make some changes. We were fortunate to be about 40% cash uh, in the small companies fund. I'll talk about that one first because that was the one where we swung the most dramatically. Um, we were about 40% cash before the market really started to sell off. Uh, and then we just, look, it wasn't fluke. We had a strategy, but it happened to be close to the bottom of the market that we went to about 10% cash. Um, it could have gone further down. We didn't know. It just happened to be when the market bounced. Um, so we went from 40% cash down to about 10% cash. We now believe that the market is, you know, we're more circumspect about its prospects. So what we've done is rather than selling out uh, and raising cash again, um, what we've done is we've broadened the diversification of the portfolio. Um, so we had probably 47 positions, whereas previously we might have only had 35 or 40 positions. Okay, Ben, same question to you. I believe you've gone, you've gone down to 15% cash, is that right? 
Uh, yeah, I think it's around 12 to 15. I've, yep. um, in the high conviction fund I run, I've never really had more than about 15. Um, and look, I, I, I learned probably long ago that um, my skills at sort of picking the market's direction in the short term are pretty poor. And um, probably I'm better, I've probably got a higher hit rate at picking good businesses and trying to stick with them. So um, what we've been doing since kind of March is uh, we've been adding to some of our defensive growth names. I think there's been some fund managers pulling money out of stocks like CSL, ResMed, et cetera, to get some risk on in their portfolios, as we saw this, you know, just rocket go up on the, on the risk on trade. Um, we've been buying a couple of stocks that we think have been sort of unfairly beaten up and still got good long-term uh, growth prospects despite some short-term issues that they're facing. Um, Can you give us an example? A um, couple of examples. Um, one would be Sydney Airport, um, which I, I know sounds like madness at the moment to be looking at an airport. But I, I do think if you take a five, and I can't rule out that these guys won't do a capital raising at some stage in the next year. But um, having seen um, Joyce's presentation, you know, if, if he's right and the data he's looking at plays out, sort of three years to um, a repeat of FY9, uh, calendar year 19 passenger movements, I think could see quite a big re-rating. And it's it's one of those assets, I think it's a great long-term asset. If you wait until you can see that things are starting to get closer, you'll look back at the share price and it'll be seven, 750. So you kind of got to try and train yourself to buy those sort of things in peak bad news. I think the airports and Auckland Airport, I think looks pretty good as yeah. well. Okay, so beaten down growth stock opportunity? I think, yeah, yeah it's not the hyper growth stock that we've been talking about, but this has been an asset that has grown consistently for years and it, there's no reason it can't continue to do it. It's an amazingly resilient sort of area of the economy. Okay. Uh, Roger, you, earlier you mentioned cloud computing. Any other parts of the market where you've seen growth at a reasonable sure. price? In small companies, we think uh, Batcore still looks cheap. Um, we believe that's a business that has less uh, economic sensitivity than a lot of other investors realise. Um, even if the economy is not doing well, people have to fix their cars. If they're not travelling overseas, they're going to be travelling locally. They're going to have to get their car ready for a local uh, driving trip. Um, in our larger cap funds, uh, we've bought businesses like West Farmers. You know, we think that they've just had a, a great stay at home, been a great stay at home trade with Officeworks uh, and Bunnings. Uh, we've bought Woolworths. They've managed to sign on a million new customers, both online and through their rewards business. Uh, and we think that they have an incredible ability to convert that through their data analysis uh, to more sales. So there's a bit of growth, believe it or not. And as Ben mentioned, we also bought uh, Sydney airports. Uh, we've also added to our holding in Atlas Arteria. In fact, it's our largest holding. Um, that owns the French, the a majority of the French toll roads, um, about 2,800 kilometres or thereabouts. Uh, and we also bought, um, in our small cap fund, we also bought Auckland International Airport. And in our large caps, Transurban. Okay. Looks like Ben and Roger agree that it's not all about growth, it's not all about value, it's something in between and hopefully that sentiment helps you grow as an investor.